Tonight with me, I have my good friends here, Mr. Zealous Fox. I have C.T. Fred, or as you see hey. down below, it's actually guys named Charles Frederick down there, but yeah. <laughs> it's good old Fred there. And then we have Bacon in the house. Everybody loves Bacon. Hey, Bacon. Say hi. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, an ad was playing. He's so eloquent. He's so eloquent. Anyway, so tonight we got a little bit of recap to do. We're going to talk about a few areas. We kind of we kind of have a little bit of an outline. You know, it's a little rough thrown together, so you have to bear with us. But we are going to do it. We're not really going to be answering a lot of questions in chat tonight, so please forgive us. If you do have questions about anything or one of the subjects that you would like to see us talk about, please send it to me via my Twitch, and I will be absolutely happy to uh, answer any questions on the preceding next, next episode that we'll do next Friday at 10 p.m. CST. So, uh, yeah, with no further ado, um, how's everybody doing tonight? Everybody doing good? Doing all right. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Good you, night. Yeah. Good you tell I drug them all in the room? <laughs> 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 so there you go. So, uh, yeah, there's um, some cool things have happened. We've had the community hub go up on Tuesday um, for everybody. I mean, some of you guys had it earlier, obviously, than we did, but uh, it's a pretty cool deal. What do you guys think? Have you guys got a zealous? Have you got a look at the community hub much? Yeah. Uh, I'm not thinking about much of it because, you know, I don't really do that sort of stuff. You don't do the whole whole video thing and and all that, so it's not kind of looking at it. But I go through it a lot as a streamer. It's kind of interesting to see who's on there and all that stuff. I know um, Fred's been really busy with school and stuff, so I don't know if you've got to look at it a lot, but uh, it's pretty cool. I've taken a look at it. I, I really, it's nice that they have kind of, uh, you know, a spotlight for people to submit things and everything. It's kind of a uh, single area where you can go and check out a whole bunch of submissions, like from citizens like us. Yeah, it's, absolutely. It's really cool. It's really neat, and I like the format. Bacon, have you spent a lot of time on there? I the spent a bit of time looking at like the 3D printed stuff. Yeah. And I'm on right now, and I can see your. It says it shows your stream right now on the front page. Yay! Well, it shows like the streamers <laughs> online, and you're one of the. I'm streamers. one of them. Well, that's kind of a downgrade than going front page, but that's cool. I'm on there, yeah. so. It's on. It's on the front page. If you scroll down. Sweet. Yeah, definitely. But it's cool because it focuses everybody on Star Citizen. We get to see just Star Citizen community stuff, and it focuses on that. So when I'm streaming other games, it off it it won't populate me on there. But why? display them on Star Citizen or talking about it or anything else, they'll, they're all about it. So it's uh, it's really neat. Um, they went with a format on it, for those people that don't know, where it's only an upvote. They won't let you downvote somebody. So don't be shy. If you do have content or anybody out there wants to put up some sort of video that's Star Citizen related, feel free to do it, man. They're trying to really create a positive environment where you won't get lashed out or anything like that. And just kind of increase people's rep for, you know, everybody wants to express their love for the game and the development. So it's really neat. And they got several categories on there from streaming to just general generic videos to all sorts of stuff. Um, I think the neatest thing about it that they really said, because somebody asked them today in RTV about, well, we don't see any content from RSI in there. And they said, well, we wanted to make it strictly about the community itself and about the people out there. We do our own stuff. So we don't we don't need to put RSI stuff, but they definitely want to have the rest of the community really have a voice there. That thing's neat. So, so uh, nothing against Reddit, but you know if you feel like you get downvoted there, or if <clears throat> the elite few over there uh, keep their stuff up, test lines. This come on over to the community <laughs> hub <laughs> and uh, you know put your content up there, and it's uh, it's pretty good, pretty good stuff. So it's always fun. Also, we saw the Issue Council come out. I haven't got to dive into it a lot, but it is such a great, ingenious idea. I mean, Fred, I know you had some positive things to say about it. Oh, my goodness. It, it is possibly the greatest tool I've ever seen come from a developer that helps people um, when submitting issues and stuff. Instead of just opening up a ticket and waiting in uh, endless space to get a response... You can go to the issue council, report an issue that you're having, and other players can actually take a look at that and try and recreate it and see whether or not they can, if they can recreate it. Um, and it, it, it definitely helps with 
fixing issues and reporting things that they see uh, with the different releases they have. It's going to be a great tool uh, that if you play Star Citizen, please use this tool because it's oh, yeah. amazing. Oh, yeah. I mean, and, you know, it's it helps us. You know, we can't, if you aren't using the tool, you can't bitch about, like, what they're using the resources on to fix. Because, I mean, basically, a lot of a lot of us have, you know, our own opinions on, oh, man, uh, CIG should focus on this, or they should be focusing on this, or this bug, or this thing, or they should totally ignore this. This is not really a huge issue. This helps us have a voice in where they're allocating resources to, oh, this is a legitimate bug, or, oh, just Joe... Um, he doesn't know how to work the game, and he just has a bug over here. So helps us validate each other and say, hey, guys, this is a real problem. You have s dozens of us, if not hundreds of us, see this issue. Please focus on this. Make it so. And, uh, you know, from there on, as a community, it helps us make them not waste time, I guess, in our own mind. So uh, I think it's good. I think it redirects a lot of focus on uh, what, what needs to be done as far as bugs go. So we yeah. are our own empowered bug smashers now. So one of the top like uh, bugs that was reported on there was the facing through walls and, and social mm -hmm. module and uh, a weird sound bug with the broadsword. Huh. Hmm. They said. Um, speaking of uh, Art Corp and some of the some of the glitching through there, I mean, I think everybody's broken every aspect of that that they could as far as like glitching through walls. I've seen videos for people spending hours on streams just going through walls or trying to go through different areas there. And uh, I, I think Art Corp's absolutely like as far as nothing to do in the whole place. It's awesome looking. It's it looks so good. It has so much interesting uh, potential there that it's going to be really fun as they continue to expand it. And I think it's just going to get better. I think it's definitely going to get better. Um, I know um, moving forward on everything, they're they're talking about, uh, what was it, on ATV, they were talking about releasing a respawn mechanic at Art Corp, which got me thinking. I was like, oh, and they said, because we're possibly going to give you the potential to die in the next build. And I'm like, oh, my. It's like, they're probably at the point where they don't want to have invisible walls, right? <laughs> So, th so they're like, um, when we expand this, we're, they're just going to be able to walk off the edge of shit. <laughs> Pretty much. Right. right. Yeah. So, well, another issue that might, uh, people by, might be running into is, say, falling off the map. If there's no collision, like they could be falling forever. And that's definitely uh, would be like a force respawn would be a nice tool to have implemented. Yeah, I think I'm going to kill myself right off when they do it because they're talking about you, you respawn in the actual ER. I'm like, I want to oh, see it. I'll just cool. jump right off the thing. So I want to see, like, what happens? What happens right, right now? I want to wake up and see it. Oh. It's, a, it, it's not our fault if you walk off the platform and then walk <laughs> off the safety nets off the uh, the landing platforms. That's not yeah. our fault. That's completely yours. Exactly. <laughs> but how but are they going to recover it. you? I want to see how far you fall, like, because you know the level mm -hmm. of detail they put in these levels. I mean, you see that some of those areas are like almost bottomless. I'm like, I want to see if you actually hit like some sort of map at the bottom, if there's anything there or not, or if it's just like you fall through and it's all like Tron, where you like turn into a grid and particles or what what happens there. It, imagine like collisions with ships that are flying through those areas you know cool. like <laughs> that would be cool okay. to discover that's real even though the constellation that's out there people have walked through it because it's not really there it's just a shell so it's oh. not an actual physical object because since they're working on it i was wondering like are you putting the real console because it's the um if you haven't looked at it it's the one they've blown up bigger like it's oh. already so it's the oversized like so the scale of it's where they're going with it for the for the development but they haven't done the interiors so it's literally just the outside map of it so, because they had video of a guy like, "Oh my God, I gotta check out the constellation." It's like he walks right through, like, "No, <laughs> no." Right. So, well, it's careful the what real you one. say about Someone that. Steal it. Careful because, what you say about that. It, because that might make Sig want to like add windshield wipers into the game. <laughs> <laughs> or 
wipe off the falling people on them, or... <laughs> yeah. Or when you fall to your death, the, there's an the, animation... The yeah. ...of a Cutlass Red picking you up. Yeah. Like, just using a broom, It would be funny, though, to corpse. see, like, you jump off and you time it, and the spaceship actually... Oh, that one's physically rendered. It's not just a hologram. Boom! And, like, knocks you across <laughs> the map. You ragdoll and all that. But, you know, as amazing as the whole place looks, and I got some background video... That I didn't get ready for this show, but I'm going to start doing my Thirsty Thursdays. Actually, like, green screen in the bar. I figured, why not, right? Might as well be in the bar <laughs> of, of our corp and hanging out with everybody and doing my nice. shots. But um, they're actually, from what Disco said on RTV, basically, they said they've looked at, he's looked at the next update for Social Module. They're calling it version 1.0. And, you know, they're adding in a lot of things, but... One thing they're going to do is they already have updated buildings that they're going to do for all of Art Corp because they say the buildings aren't good enough. And I'm like, this place looks awesome. What do you mean it's not good enough? But they're good. they have more. So I'm excited not only for the expansion, but just see what they tweak in there for uh, a lot of the stuff. So it's going to be well, neat. They're adding in the, the clothes shop and they're opening mm -hmm. up the all alleyways and stuff that's already blocked off. Yep. Yep, I just wish they'd add a little card game in the bar too, so I can sit down with my buddies and or checkers. Some cards. Checkers would be okay. Cards would be better because yeah. then I'd feel like it open up the window. Yeah, for like twenty one or little uh, seven card or something, you know, so we can start getting that economy going here soon. So I gotta, I gotta buy some new shoes. No, but um, yeah, I think it's gonna open, be good. Open one door, please. It's the fire range, please. The yes, fire the fire range. range. I mean, come on. <laughs> You cannot allow me to go into a gun shop with all this cool stuff and then not allow me to shoot any weapons. I mean, I don't even care if they function right. I just want to go into a gun range and shoot Van Duel like silhouettes coming at me on a little tractor thing or like panels moving. Now, are they going to let you try out a gun before you purchase it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Most that's, likely. I think that's the intention long long term. They're going to let you go in there and you can test fire everything. and then you're that's awesome. it, it, That was the advertisement uh, mm -hmm. in the shop. It was... Uh, you can try before you buy. Yeah, try before you buy on. I was like, oh. Nice. So, nice. That's exciting. I don't know how they'll work the hand grenades, though, or the larger weapons on the ships. That would be funny. It's like, I have to try I have to try the sledge weaponry in your firing range real quick. <laughs> well, I don't know if you remember. In the hangar, there that. used to be a little thing where you could fire your ship's weapon. Oh, that's you right. I completely forgot them. about that they took that out. Yeah. yeah it I used heard to about be it. I never got to see it because that's before my time. That's when you guys were still. That thing was amazing. It was mm. fun to mess around with. It and was the... hilarious. Hmm. Yeah, because the, the laser bolts would just like bounce off of shit. <laughs> bounce around and all that. But yeah, so there's a lot of good things about Art Corp that we'll be looking forward to. In that regard. And on top of that, they'll be releasing, you know, the Nyx landing zone, which they give us a sneak peek of. I'll go ahead and I'm going to play, if this works, fingers crossed. We're going to play a quick clip of that so people who haven't seen it. It's not not brand new information, but it's it's been out there for a little bit. Let's see if this actually comes up. Maybe. Screen's all going. I'll know when it comes up correctly if it's actually going to or not. While that's playing, maybe we could uh, talk about uh, kind of the history behind the Nick system and yeah, kind of why it looks the way it does and everything. Yeah, go ahead, Fred. Tell me about it more, because uh, you know you know more about it than I do. I I'm I know it's the pirate zone, right? That's that's right. a big deal. On it's a main chaotic pirate area. Right. Well, Nix initially started out as as a mining area. The asteroids they were mining uh, rare metals and stuff like that there. But the UBE found out that it was too expensive for them to maintain their mining operations. So they essentially abandoned it and left the miners and stuff there. And so over time, there's become this, this like counterculture, this anarchy kind of um, uh, society there where they hate the UEE, you know, so you're going to have lots of pirates, lots of criminals, 
a lot of shady deals going on in the Knicks system. Um, but the reason, you know, why it looks the way it is, very industrial, you know, and mm-hmm. you're going to be able to land and go through some of these old mining tunnels and stuff. Because I'm pretty sure the landing zone isn't actually a planet. I think it's an asteroid base. If I remember right, that's what it was lore-wise. It was supposed to be an asteroid base um, from all their write-ups and stuff like that. And I'm watching it right now. You can see, like, you didn't see land vehicles moving around and stuff. And I know it's like a predetermined flight path for the actual landing. But, yeah, as they flesh out the zone, it's really going to be a neat area to explore. I mean, it's so so vastly different than what Art Corp is. I think it's going to be really, really cool. Yeah, it's going to be dark, nitty-gritty, mm-hmm. you know, super industrial, you know. I almost get, like, an original Aliens movie, like, type of feel for it, you know, where the complex and stuff. Not that there's a lot of monsters that jump out or anything, but, but that type of <laughs> the super... Xenomorphs. Sp- yeah, the super space type of facility, you know, where it's, like, all hollowed out and got all the stuff, so a function... Yeah, it looks like an amazing area to just go and check out and just... Mm-hmm just the admire the artwork you know i don't know if you guys were able to see in the beginning but you could kind of see off in in the background you could see all the other asteroids in this kind of asteroid field that this exists in and it's just like the amount of artwork and everything that that uh the level of uh, detail is fantastic oh it's amazing it's a beautiful game yeah and they're not done this is just like just like with Art Corp, I mean, you can see them here on this part right now when the video catches up for you guys. It's uh, They're walking through the tunnels, and I get that whole feeling of, like, uh, Empire Strikes Back. The, like <laughs> Hoth. the Yeah, Hoth, like the <laughs> tunnels, you know, just need a little more ice. But you get yeah. that whole, like, inside the, the, the craters and chasms there. It's, like, so vast. Yeah. Like a huge map. Looks yeah, really you definitely... Good. They sell it really well too. Like yeah. they're tying the lore into how they're building these space, you know, these space stations. It's like this looks like an abandoned mining facility, and that's oh, exactly what what it's supposed to be. And it looks great. It yeah. really does. But if it's if it's full of, if it's like a safe haven for the, for criminals and stuff, where are like there's there's really no evidence of it in the video right now. No, you don't, you don't see that because, like, okay, well, I think they're approaching it. It's a safe haven because just like any um, frontier-type industrial area, you ended up in historically with lots of types of criminals and, and different elements involved in that because it's a harsh environment, you know. They'll take all kinds. They want, if you bring, bring goods there, they want goods from whoever they, they can get what's done because it's not, like, a really nice you know, pristine area like Art Corp. I mean, you're not going to be able to get the latest fashions and the latest gear and the latest whatever. You're going to get whatever's either issued to you by the company you work for there, or you're going to get, you know, whatever you can off the black market, which really starts to harbor in about piracy and about thievery and about trying to bring all this type of stuff to the edge of the universe where we're getting resources from. So... That, that's what makes that neat aspect to it, and that, I think that's where you get that. You aren't going to see it from the outside here, but as you get into it socially and they add NPCs and start seeing I'm sure it'll get that feel to it. Right. Yeah. I'm, I'm thinking Barter Town from yeah. Mad Max Enter the Thunderdome. Like, you know, Even though it's a these. terrible movie, I agree. It's a terrible movie, but like... Most that quoted kind of Mad atmosphere. Max ever, though, by the way. Most quoted <laughs> Mad Max is from the movie that was the worst one. Right. So, oh, but yeah. Yeah, it looks great. I think it's. I think it's gonna be great. I'm excited. I'm excited. So. Yep. I want to just be able to take a mer- Merlin right down into the middle of the crater. That would be. Pretty I, fun. You know, the thing is, it's the level of how much we'll be able to fly in the environment, like free flight. Is totally as much it's totally as up in the air because like right there, that whole landing sequence, that is um, path determinate. That is something they're predetermining to come there because they don't want you crashing into buildings, they don't want you killing everybody. You know, mm-hmm. it's like you're gonna have the choice from being in space to going through the entry level and then coming in and then being there. I don't think um, they're gonna have it might have areas in some planets where you can do like some space hot drop in type stuff, but I I don't think on these 
main cities and stuff, they're going to do that. At least not initially. Yeah, they're, you're definitely going to see yeah. uh, the two different types. You're going to have the type where it has the pre-scripted landing, and you're also going to have like just open land anywhere you want and take your rover out and explore. Now, Mid actually touches a uh, great point. What they could do is like a no-fly zone where like automatic mm -hmm. weapons could pop up and shoot you out of the air if you get in this area, and they could yeah. completely avoid people flying their Merlins down through these tunnels and shooting everybody. Yeah. But uh, only time will tell how they address that. For sure, for sure. So, I mean, you know, and the other thing, obviously, everybody's looking forward to uh, outside the landing zone is the big one. It's obviously the, the large map updates where we go to the new Arena Commander 2.0 stuff, where we go into the, um, as Chris Roberts has said, the baby uh, PU um, those type of things. I think they're also, from what uh, Tony had said, they're calling the baby PU actually like the Exoverse, where they could like test bed all this cool stuff and and see what's happening with it and and really make it. Um, I don't know, t just test out all the stuff that we've been talking about from what like the mining occupations to go out and actually mine asteroids from uh, the whole salvaging operations. Do the actual uh, player versus environment type stuff. So, I think it's going to be really good. I'm, you know, I think it's it's exciting. The most exciting thing I've seen in the game so far since I've been a part of it. Yeah. How long did they say it would take to fly from one end of the map to the other? It depends um, on what you mean by map. Something yeah. about like two hours. <coughs> well, of the no. Two point no, map. No. If you're well, if you're if you're talking about the big world map, it would take you. Um, like two hours if you're flying at, you know, your normal 300 speeds. Meters per yeah, three hundred meters per second. Yeah. If you're talking about um, like Hyper. quantum drive travel, right. it would take you ne several minutes, maybe. Right. Yeah. And they're if definitely you're, if you're talking about implement. one side to the other galaxy. You're talking about a half hour, twenty minutes. Right. Right. Yeah, the, we're definitely going to see that quantum drive implemented with this new uh, map because the size of it's going to be insane. Um, it's interesting to see, like, okay, if they do, if we do see the mining mechanics and all that stuff in this, like, is is what you collect in there? Are you going to be able to keep that, like? Or is it just going to be like, hey, come try out these mechanics we put in there, and you don't really get anything? Like, right now, Arena Commander, the currency you get is REC. Now, are you going to get REC from doing um, more than, you know, by doing your role outside of, of dogfighting? I mean, is this, what do you guys think? Is that a valid question? Or Yeah, you know, I would, um, they're gonna have to. They're gonna have to vary it. They're gonna have to mix it up. You can't have like a single form of do this to just get money. Do this to just get that. I, I don't know. I think wreck eventually is gonna die. I think they'll eventually just kill it off. When they decide to do that, I have no idea because they really call it the temporary currency. But, right. But they said that they are gonna continue it for Arena Commander because it's gonna be a sub game in the universe. But Arena I don't know. Commander FPS and. Multi yeah, but I don't think I think he even Chris Roberts alluded that they weren't going to do wreck on the FPS. I thought that they were, they were going to do it for all of them as well, but I don't know that they're going to implement that. I think because he's also said by that time where they have the FPS out, they're really hoping that he we can start utilizing our UEC, but they haven't figured out if you just get it back automatically or if you're going to get you know like some other stuff or you know if it's you use it you lose it. Or if you get it back when the game launches, or how they want to do that at this point. I mean, they're still working that whole theory out right. on how they want to do it. But uh, yeah. I, I, I don't think there's going to be any sort of economy implemented with uh, Exoverse because um, it's essentially going to be run through the simulation that mm -hmm. Arena Commander 1.0 and 1.2 and all that stuff. It's still going to be a simulation. So, like, 
yeah, it'll be cool to get in there and try out like these mechanics that they've been working on. But essentially, I don't think you'll get any benefit from doing that. Aside I, from I don't think you get a benefit either. I what I would suggest is if he does want to implement and test some economy, which I'd love for him to do. If you're listening, Chris, please test the economy more and tell us more about it. Because I got a bone to pick with some of the stuff he said a couple weeks ago. But either way. I I would be fine with like uh, it just be something that disappears, you know. It's like oh, this is just money you're earning here, and it's just for this because they talked about wanting to simulate trade, as in taking you know quests and missions or whatever you want to call them to go from one planet over to the other planets, and then okay, if you go to the close planet next door, then it's like not as much money. You go farther here, it's it's more risky, but you get this. I mean, they're talking about making these maps anywhere from like three to three hundred million. Kilometers, so you're talking about encompassing, um, you know, vast solar system type areas, not just you know like oh here's this and there's the moon and and that's it. You know, you get a little bit larger area than that. So I could literally drive out into space, sit there, and you would not be able to find me. Because, right, but you know. <laughs> at the same time, it's still a simulation. It is. Like that's the thing is it's it's not a real um, area that you're going to. It's all but. Simulated. One of the things we're going to test simulated space rocks. That's right, <laughs> but but they're, one of the things we want to test is persistence. And what better way to test persistence than having some sort of like false or fake or you know economy, right? So what you did in a quest or mission yesterday would carry over. That money would still be there. Make sure that the wallets and the economy system's working on a small scale that's tied to your account just to make sure it functions you know i'm not saying that we'd be able to shop get all these weapons and we should keep them and carry over and all that stuff but it would be neat to test at least on an economic level of trade and then maybe you have to refuel your ships and then you have to spend money for that so you have to budget out what that is and maybe when you go offline you know maybe that gets wiped every week or something like that but i'd like to see them work up to that you know what i mean where they're actually getting more involved with uh the economy aspect and how it's going to function. And uh, one, one of the main reasons it concerns me, too, is because what Chris said two weeks ago, where he talked about some of the controls and stuff, right? And I don't know if we've talked about this privately off the air several times, but he talked about the controls and stuff and how there would be player transaction limits. And, you know, they already have limits on how much UEC you'll be able to buy per day, per week, per month, or whatever, and it'll help control for botting and gold farming and that stuff. But the player-to-player -player transactions is a real concern of mine. And I think, you know, as far as the you and the NPCs go, no big deal, right? That just generates, that's going to happen, whatever. But if Fred wants to contract me for a protection run on his uh, mining rig when he's got his Orion out there or something then how's that work you know is he gonna be able to does he just have to create a mission for me and that's it or is he actually gonna be able to say hey man come out here and help me out i'll give you like uh five thousand uec if you give us protection over the cross the next two days or whatever you know those type of mechanics i think are really important to talk about even now because i think they go not only towards the narrative but they go towards the main core aspect of the game's functionality and the drive and purpose to do stuff because for me, I want to earn money so I can buy more cool shit, so I can blow more cool shit up. That's always my formula in games. If I I understand the other mechanics of that, but I, I'd like to at least have some sort of working theory on that. Because I know Chris says it's all too early and blah, blah, blah and all this stuff. But in other episodes, he talks about he'd like to get some economy online just to kind of work through the system, see how it works. So I'm like, I don't right, know. But did you even touch about what he talked about where he, they wanted to limit the, the trading between players? Yeah, that's a yeah, that's that's the thing. And and yeah, I kind of glazed over that a little bit, but they did want to talk about and he, here's the thing. And we infer a lot when Chris Roberts talk. And we know Chris Roberts talks a lot. He's the boss. So he talks about uh, a lot of stuff necessarily that maybe becomes foot and mouth a little bit shortly after, and he even openly admits that. That's why I love Chris. He's great. But one of the main things I was really concerned about with that was the player limitations on uh, trades and transactions 
And I want to know, I'm not criticizing, I just want to know what they are or what his mindset is. Because he obviously has a strong thought about it because he's mentioned it in over two to three different episodes in the last four to five weeks about, but don't worry about, we're going to have limitations on players to help control that. And I, really, I want to know what, what they are. What are these limitations? Yeah, because he, <laughs> like... he said verbatim that you will not be able to go out and just wire your buddy a million UEC. There's going to be restrictions on that. Now, to me, he, he mentioned taxes and stuff also in the same paragraph. But to me, when you say there's restrictions where I can't do that, if you say I can't do that because of restriction, that's not tax inherent to me. Because, shit, maybe I just want to pay the taxes. Well, that's fine. I'm cool with paying taxes on those type of things. But if you make a cap limit like what you're talking about in the purchase of UEC on where I can't give Fred money... Like in my organization where we're going to be mercenaries, how am I going to deal with a merc mercenary to mercenary trade, right? How am I going to deal with that? That's going to be chain. That's going to be a, a real big problem. So I, I just, I don't know. I'm concerned. I'm not trying to say, oh my God, you're doing it wrong. Cause I, they don't, they don't admittedly know exactly what they're going to do with it. But if you're making those kind of calls now, what I don't want to have happen is I don't want Chris Roberts to come out one week and say, guess what? Look what we've done. And everybody go, oh, right. what, what are you doing? <laughs> I think it's a conversation that needs to be held sooner than later, even if they don't really lock it down till next year, whatever. I just the economy is such an important part of this game. And if you read like the haters, it's the only aspect that really they have left to try to knock Star Citizen about, like, they haven't figured out the economy. How are you going to run a game without economy? Because they already bitched about multi crew and all this stuff. Not that we listen to them anyway. They already bitched about that stuff. So what are they going to do when it comes down to all this? You know, what was what, the aspect of this? So I'd just like to shut the rest of people up and say, look, we got a plan. This is what we're doing. This, or this is the direction we're going. Because it, as... Oh. As, uh, you know, lovers of this game, so I watched the Idris that I want to get really bad fly overhead there in that video. Um, I just I just want to see us do our best to flesh it out. I mean, they've given us great controls. They've done a great job so far. We got the issue council where we can get directly involved. I say, you know, we got those avenues. We got the community hub now where we could actually get involved and make video and kind of promote the game we love to not only inside our community, but to people abroad and all this. We need to really focus in on some of these details with that. They've done a great job. I just don't want to ignore certain aspects of, of this. And even if it's just a conversation us and the community have. Maybe because we know how well they listen to the community as a whole. We need to kind of talk a little bit more about these restrictions and controls. Because I know when, when I bring up the subject on Reddit or somewhere... What I see is like, oh, don't worry, it's too early. Don't they, you know? Everybody wants to defend the game, and I'm not trying to attack the game. I love the game as much as everybody else. But we I just need some clarification, that. please, like, please, please, please <laughs> clarify to me. Oh, Chris, how they how they implement some of these controls can completely affect how we set up how we're going to play the game. Yeah, you know, I mean, could, decisions we're making now on chip blow buying holes in the yeah. plans that we're making. Absolutely. And, you know, it's like when, when we talk about and purchase ships as individuals or as groups or as organizations, I mean, how how's, how am I going to deal with another org? How is this going to work? I mean, I don't want to have to create a mission every time I want to trade money to somebody. <laughs> you know? It's right. like, oh, hey, Fred, could you stop and get me some fuel for blah, blah, blah? Oh, by the way, let me make a mission for that. Can, right. I, can I just send the guy some fuel or some money and say, pick me up some fucking nachos at the gas station while you're down there or something? I mean... Right. I need some stuff too, man. Well, so and, e and 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 paying other other people too. Yeah. You know, like we have, say, well, the four of us go out on on a a, a bounty mission. We collect yeah. a bounty. How do we split up the payout of that bounty? You know, if yeah. you can't trade directly, you know, are we going to have to go? You can't post a board because then it's open to everyone. Yeah, or say you're a pirate yeah. and you, you you know you seize a ship and a good amount of cargo and you go out and sell this. You know, of course, you're not going to say, 
oh, Joe, I know you don't have a transport ship, but here's your share. Good luck with that. You know, it's like somebody's <laughs> usually going to go and sell all this goods. Maybe he doesn't want to sell it just legitimately to, like, some NPC. Maybe he wants to sell it to Fred. Maybe we buy some fuel off a guy. He, like, siphoned out of the gas tank on this thing, and we want to get it right. over here, you know? That's what makes the economics interesting in games. That's what makes it more dynamic. And I think it, it, we just need a little more information so that way not only we feel assured, it helps us plan out what we want to do. And I, I think that's huge. Yep. Huge Absolutely. part of the game. So, I don't know. I, I, I have a little write-up we're going to do. And if you guys haven't had the opportunity to check it out yet, I'm going to pimp a site that's not even out there yet because it's, it's a site that one of my good friends is working on. And I'm, I'm going to been looped in to try to help him out with it and do all the stuff, too, because we're going to do it as a group. And uh, just provide some more information, more graphical, because I love groups like INN, and I love Reddit, and I love all this stuff. But I like to be able to see things. I'm a visual person. I I don't I don't read as much as I probably should on certain aspects. So um, can you read? I I, I I fudge my way through. I fudge my way through. Okay, but uh, you know, coming soon to you, you'll have here StarCitizen24.com. A website and it, it has a lot of you know regurgitation the same stuff you see on everybody else it just framed it a different way it's it's so beautiful and flowing we got direct feeds up here you can see what's happening on twitter you can see what's happening on reddit you know we're not shy and anybody that wants to you know be a part of this or help us with content you know inn if you're out there and you want to partner up and stuff we're all down with everybody we're not trying to say take over anybody's gig we just want to be have our voice too and put it out there in community so uh, when it goes up, check it out. There's ad space available for people to promote corpse and, and, and their projects and everything. But everything Star Citizen related and Star Citizen related only is going on here. Um, you might see me stream other games from time to time, a little box to keep it interesting. But, you know, it's all there, guys. It's going to be so awesome. So I'm excited about that. In addition to that, they announced at the end uh, other things we can look forward to for the next few weeks. Here, I guess they're going to be doing some sort of uh, Chris Roberts reverse the verse type thing where they're actually going to have mm. his regular 10 for the chair. And then on Wednesdays, he's going to answer some sub questions. Too. So more answers, more answers I, from the mayor. I don't really see the point. Um, I, it seems honestly, like they already have the a 10 thing. for the chairman. I mean, I appreciate all everything Chris Roberts does. Like, mm -hmm. you know, he tries to be open with the community and everything. But honestly, I don't see a need to have Chris Roberts have a whole nother show. I do. <laughs> I'll tell you what. If he's going to answer the question about the economy, he can have 15 shows. Because right now I'm really <laughs> concerned. So, so for my own selfish endeavors, I do see the point, though, in that. I, I'm like, you know, it, it, I, I'll have to see the format of what they do before I judge entirely. Because... It sounded to me, based on what I saw, which I read more of it back over on INN from their transcripts on it than anything, but I saw that they said they were going to answer questions from subscribers, and I was like, isn't that what he does on right. Mondays? I mean, if it was right. live questions, great, but it's supposedly the Wednesday event will be live. But uh. he's not answering from live chatters. <laughs> So I mean, I get to see him like so, non-edited, so it's going to be a four-hour show. I don't know, I don't know what's going to happen, but something's uh, going to happen. I'll have to watch it. So, At least we're getting more than ten answers. This is true. Uh, well, the problem we is, it takes an chairman hour is... to answer ten questions. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I I can appreciate that. I, I'm a talker too, if you have. So I I know the stretch it out thing, longer answer on everything, but. I, I'd, I'd like to see him directly answer questions from the audience. They can filter, yeah. they can poke it out, or they can do whatever. I mean, I, I don't know. As long as it's questions not from subscribers, to again, because there's all. Uh, well, they basically answered pretty much all of the questions from uh, the subscribers. Here's the problem I have: subscribers do it too, but non-subscribers yeah. do it even worse. 
They asked the same damn question that somebody asked randomly That's... like five minutes before them or last week or whatever. Because subs usually, I'm paying for the game. I'm checking out week to week. So I usually ask at least some sort of new or different or relevant information of what's going on. And the air guy goes, so, you know, how how are you going to fly a ship? <laughs> you know, or something just like... Yeah, I think that's the the issue you're going to have with doing a live question and answer. Like yeah. a live Q&A, you're going to run into that. You're going to have repeat questions. Now, if they could filter through and see, okay, these are the questions we're going to answer because we haven't seen any questions like this before. Yep. That's just a better way to m mitigate that from happening is have pre-selected questions that he's answering. Yep. And then maybe he can do a live um elaboration on his answers you know kind of yeah. a back and forth on pre-selected questions see because you know the way the reverse the verse works is like they they shoot they show their show right and then they allow you to ask questions about the contents of the show or anything star citizen i think they should at least allow you if they're going to do one reverse the chair or whatever you want to call it which is kind of a weird name for it but they just called it rgb <laughs> but reverse the chair would be like Sit up backwards, but either way, no. So he's uh, he, if you ask a counterpoint, like he gives his answer for a question, one of the ten questions they chose, we should be able to question his answers specifically related to those questions. Like I could say, okay, question number one, you said blah 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 blah. Could you dive down a little deeper on this aspect? Because that would fix my economy question right there. Right. It's like you just said you're going to restrict it. How in your mind are you thinking you're going to restrict it? I know you haven't committed anything yet. Right. Tell and me. And this is why I think this is a bad idea. It could you be. You know, the back and forth, you know? <laughs> it could be, but um. also it could be a bad idea because Chris Roberts might actually try to answer that question without consulting <laughs> the rest of the staff. And that could be really horrible, but <laughs> yeah. I still want the answer anyway. I don't care who gives right. it to me. Ben can give it to me. Sandy can give it to me, for God's sake. But somebody <laughs> needs to answer the question. I want to know. Yeah. I really do. I keep posting about it until somebody answers. Doesn't downvote. <laughs> All right. What else? Anything else you guys wanted to talk about? Mention about this week that you're excited about? We got the Avenger Free Fly weekend going on. That's pretty cool. Check it out. It's 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 a pretty bulletproof ship right now. Yeah. Um, uh, they've said before they're not going to do any balancing with Arena Commander, and as it stands right now, the Avenger is a very rugged ship. So. Yeah. You know, if you're sitting in Arena Commander and you have issues with getting blown up in like 3.2 seconds, try out the Avenger. You might live a little bit longer. You might live a little <laughs> bit longer. That's absolutely true. Also, if you want to get any flight tips on that, check out Enyo. E-N-D-Y-O. Amazing Avenger pilot. As a matter of fact, that's all he flies. He won't fly anything else but the Avenger, but he's really good. And uh, he streams as well. He's a great guy. I just had to give him a shout out there. So he's uh, definitely check him out. Um, you know, if you guys get the opportunity, link him in chat or something too. But yeah, Inya is really, really good with the Avenger. Really good to uh, do all that stuff. So I don't know. Everything else that's happened really we got the hangar flare. We got the FPS report. And it's like eh, FPS. Not, not much report. Yeah, not much report. <laughs> you know, it's like we're close. But just only. <laughs> but we're just only. Um, I, I don't know. I'm really excited about Citizen Con. Yes. So. Citizen Con, it's, it's coming up October 10th. Not that far. We're under a month now, people. And, you know, they're, even, even Ben admitted openly. He's like, all right, I don't want to hype train stuff up, you know, because there's not a lot of happening here in the next two weeks. Basically, it was a summary there on, on Reverse Reverse. But he said... Get excited about Citizen Con. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be I, amazing. I, personally, I think there's going to be a big reveal along with um, big Zealous uh, Vengeance. A big uh, sales. Uh, uh, probably going to be a new Idris uh, replacement or possibly a, a cruiser class. Oh, my God. I know. All so, cruiser. so you're talking a concept sale for Citizen Con announcement. I'm thinking. Uh, they said new ship that we never heard of. So and they didn't say I didn't hear anything about no concept sale. I don't know. I don't know now, because are this, is this going to be a concept apart from all the assets that were leaked previously? Because this was a completely a unknown ship hmm. that, that was not mentioned in the lore at all. 
basically. That's exciting. Mm, that Which is kind of cool. And, and I can only think of two of those. And that's <laughs> the the replacement for the Idris and the um, Corvette. No, well, that is Cor- the, the Corvette, Corvette is or, the replacement for the Idris because the Idris used oh, to be the Corvette. Okay. Or Cruiser. Yeah. Actually, no, I can think of another one. The Battle Cruiser too. In other words, prepare your wallets because Pre- that would be. Wallets and credit cards. Expense. Be prepared. <laughs> uh, also, the annual uh, ship sale that they have every year. Um, mm-hmm. Every ship. Um, yeah, pretty much every <laughs> ship. Uh, pretty much every ship um, that has been up to sale up till now. Uh, hopefully, will be available for purchase. Uh, granted, they probably won't have LTI. They'll probably have the two year. Um, two to one year. Oh, that's another thing. Did you realize that when you have two year on something, it's in game two years? What? Did, oh. they, did they confirm that? This is something. Now, we need confirmation from them. Just like the economy question, we need confirmation. But this is something that I saw WTF a source reconfirming and several other people reconfirming that this is actually your ship time insurance is going to be based on game time. They're breaking physics. Space time is relative in space. Like t- two years on what planet? Because it takes t- that makes I no know, sense. I know. I know. So like all that ah. six month crap I got. I'm like, is that like a week? Well, is that you know? I'm like, is that <laughs> is that like two days? Is that oh. like a month? I don't that, know. Well, if you buy the ship, like. You'll have the whole insurance forever. Just that insurance goes for the weapons and the... Well, if you have LTI. But if you don't have LTI and you buy a ship that just says, oh, six months insurance. From what the the other streamers are saying, that insurance quite quite likely is just in-game time insurance. So if a day is like an hour, then you're ticking through after 30 hours of gameplay. You just went through a month. But um, insurance is cheap. It'll be okay. We'll, we'll all be able to run a small uh, if it's trade route time, it will insure be... all our ships. <laughs> but I won't be able to give you any if... money to help you out with it. <laughs> I'll have to make a mission for it. And it, but, uh, if, it if it's in game time, it would be SED, Standard Earth Days. That makes sense because Earth is the center of the UEE. The that, soul system. And if I remember correctly, on, on one of the Moby Glass pictures, they actually had an SET uh, abbreviation with a time uh, on it. So um, can we go into the social module and see how fast time passes? They don't have a that. day-night cycle on there. They don't, yeah, they don't have any of that yet. There's no night time. I want to see Art Corp at night. That's gonna be beautiful. It's gonna be so awesome with all the Through buildings. The city lit up. lights. Oh, and the oh. and the panels. Like and the neon. Want, the big thing That's I want to see gorgeous. is if they're redoing rescope in the city, I want to see those panels get reactive. Even if they're static, like some sort of reaction like type thing, you come up to it and it's like Ooh. Right. Like that would be so neat. But nighttime would be amaze balls on that. It's gonna be so good. It's gonna be gorgeous. Yep. All right, guys, I think we're about out of time here, so uh, we're going to wrap it up for this week. But be sure to tune in next week for the next episode of the Space Bro Show, which will be Friday night again at 10 p.m. CST. Um, Watch me throughout the week whenever you can, obviously, because you have to. So whenever I stream. So weekends, I usually stream at 10 p.m. CST throughout the weekend. And then during the week, we do something right around noon CST on to about 3 p.m. CST, and then we come back on at night again. So... Do all that. Be sure to save up your bro bucks. Be sure to prepare every week for Thirsty Thursday where we give away Star Citizen gift cards. And, uh, you know, throw a shout out for the show whenever you can. We'll, uh, we'll try to get see if we can't get upvoted a little bit, get a little more exposure. Again, if you want to see something asked or questioned or found out about or talked about or discussed, please, please, please take the time to go ahead and shoot me a message on Twitch. And I'll be happy to uh, reply or include it in the show. If you're in another org and you'd like to be part of the panel one week, go ahead and throw that out there. And, uh, you know, as soon as it goes up, guys, we'll put out some Twitch announcements and some Twitter announcements about it. But check out StarCitizen24.com where we're going to have interactive information for you 24 hours a day. The best we can do for that and uh, include everybody in the community's content that wants to be a part of it. 
it has good content. So that's all I got. So for me and the rest of the guys, have a great evening. Uh, we'll see you later. And um, be safe. See you in the verse. There you go.